everyone, welcome to a very much anticipated episode from Ampro Engineering. I have been dying to get my hands on this. Look at it. There's a tear here. But otherwise, look at it. It's magnificent. So what this is, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing something here, but the Tianjin Dafa, this is actually a Chinese licensed, and I'm not talking about the toy, I'm talking about the real one. It is a, a Chinese licensed vehicle produced locally in China, but it's licensed off of Daihatsu. Let's open this guy up here. Now, actually, I don't, speaking of licensing, I don't know how the licensing actually works, whether Daihatsu is licensing this or whether it is Tianjin. I don't know how that works. Either way, it is officially licensed and looks magnificent. It says Timeless Classic. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that. Absolutely fantastic. Let's just double check on the box, see what we got back here. To those of you who have the other Daihatsu slash Tianjin van, this is actually a longer chassis. This is the chassis from the D12. Some more information over here, so go ahead and check that out. Look at you. What a gem, oh my God. I've been just dying to get my hands on this thing. Let's see here, this appears to be the color of the injection molded plastic. The D12, for example, was painted, and this one here does not appear to be painted. Full undercarriage here, which is very, very nice. Provisions for operational taillights, as well as the side marker, the turn signal. Looks like in shipping, whatever jostled this thing to tear the box, appeared to have released the seat. Should be able to, oh, it just pops right back in there. There we go. Absolutely fantastic little guy. A little bit of scuffing here in the shipping process. That can be very easily polished out. But yeah, here we have it. Later on, I'll compare it to the van as well as to the D12. Standard WPL radio. I am a massive fan of these. So here we have an increase and decrease of the steering rate and throttle rate. So you can run it a little bit slower or run it on full power. And then steering rate again is a, a max steering rate for quote unquote drifting. And then a more standard steering rate. There is your trim. So for a moment, I want to take a look at what this comes with. We do have our instructions here shows us where all the decal goes here we've got what the package includes so wpl usually gives us i love the little logo it's fantastic they usually provide a number of spare parts so it's kind of cool and just so you know that there's a lot of components you can buy for these d series vehicles that are metal all right so here we've got the headache bar that goes mounted to the rear of the vehicle this is the random part sprue wipers mirrors door handles so this is the generic van version of the plastic sprue which is a good way to cut costs a bit charger this is a lithium ion battery pack that these come with the decal sheet is also likely the generic one yeah this is also for the van but will also work on this vehicle wpl stickers just some other basic spare components these are the little metal mirrors that will stick on which are kind of cool because you'll get actually something nice and mirrored spare pieces for the drive shaft these are the upper links for the front end and a rear spring now one thing i noticed oh, the seat fell on again so one thing cool i noticed about this so at the rear is where the spare tire goes so opening this up you can see the area right there for the spare okay so when i tried closing this it wouldn't latch and then it occurred to me what's happening here this i'll open it up here you see the little the little key right there what WPL has done is made it so that you actually have to spin the rear tire to lock and unlock the battery compartment. Absolutely fantastic idea. My D12 doesn't have that, nor does my Daihatsu van. So I don't know if later iterations have it, but this is the first time I'm seeing it and it's super cool. Undercarriage, pretty standard. Your motor and transmission are up here. Drive shaft to the rear axle, solid rear axle, no diff. 
all plastic components. Again, metal ones are totally available as well as front suspension arms and metal also. The front camber can be adjusted. These do have torsion front springs and leaves back here. Before we take this out for a drive, I did want to compare it to its siblings. The first one we'll compare it to is its fraternal brother, which is the D22. I tend to have a bit of an issue keeping the names in line. This is the 32. This is the 22. Front cabs are identical. Both pickup trucks, short bed, crew cab, of course, that's the main cosmetic difference. But what's a little bit less obvious is that the chassis are actually different. This truck here rides on the chassis from the van, the C42, mm -hmm. whereas this vehicle here runs on the chassis from the D12. So it's got a little bit longer of a wheelbase. This truck here is round about 20 millimeters longer than its single cab sister over here. So you can kind of see here that you're going to have a lot more payload capacity in this guy versus this guy as the bed's significantly bigger on this, but you can have a lot more fun with the interior on that guy there. Since this does share the chassis with the D12, we can look at these two side by side. The 32 is significantly longer than the D12, but if we do compare these two, we can see that they have the exact same wheelbase, even though it doesn't look like it on camera because I'm doing something weird evidently. Anyway, there you go. Same exact wheelbase, same chassis. And just a little side note here, you can see that they have updated this. Mine has a little clip right here. And that's how it stays in. And yes, this has opened up from time to time. So very welcome change on the 22 and 32. The D42 is such, such a fantastic little truck. I love the fact that it's a van. I think it's super cool. And it allowed me to absolutely pack this thing with five dolls absolutely killer again this one has a longer wheelbase this van is actually very stubby it's even stubbier than the 22 a pickup truck version is you can see it right here it's around about 35 millimeters shorter than the pickup and also with a shorter wheelbase also a little side note these chargers for these batteries are for lithium ion batteries I would hesitate to charge these batteries with a lithium polymer charger I don't, again, I don't know much about the battery makeup, but a lithium polymer and ion are definitely different, even though they have very, very similar voltages. Just a heads up, charge the battery with the charger this came with, or one that's appropriately capable of charging a lithium ion battery. Turn that on, truck on, truck's looking for a signal. There it goes, lights are on. So again, I'm going to crank the wheel to the, actually we'll adjust them a little bit. Okay, right there. We'll crank the wheel to the right. Press the little steering ray button. Throttle, try and do this like this. Push the throttle ray button. Maybe a 10% increase in power. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect, you know, that much of an increase. What I will say is that the Ability to make slow moves and do detailed driving and stay controlled is remarkable. The electronics on this vehicle are very strangely refined. Like you wouldn't expect something so cheap to have such good electronics, but the steering servo seems nice and smooth on this vehicle. Throttle response is very linear, very consistent almost makes me want to go out and drive it. Maybe I'll do that. I think at this point, I'm going to take it for a spin. Those of you familiar with the way I do a lot of these video reviews, we usually keep the van utterly stock and with you know, no stickers, no moldings, no trim, because usually we'll have a follow-up video where we go ahead and ampro it.
steering, increased throttle. I feel like it steers too much. This one doesn't like it. You don't like it at all, do you? What is doing that? Steering. I call the train race, but yeah, it doesn't know. It does not like to I mean, what do you want me to say? This thing is just like the D12, which I'm in love with. It's just like the D42, which I'm in love with. And it's even weirder than both of them. This is the weirdest RC car I have. And as such, I am absolutely in love with it. This is so freaking cool. Not only do I think it's amazing, but I cannot wait to see what people do to this thing. I want to see the custom builds that sprout out of this particular vehicle. I love the size. I think it's very portable. You know, it's not gigantic like a 110 scale vehicle. And it's not minuscule like a, you know, 124 scale vehicle. It's definitely an on-road car. I wouldn't do anything more than a very hard-packed dirt trail. Though I have seen a lot of four-wheel drive conversions done using the C chassis. Where I will say this vehicle does falter a bit is in its performance. The motor is... It's, I don't want to say it's underpowered. It's likely very appropriately powered as the real vehicle is not going to be fast either. So if you are thinking of, you know, making this a tow truck or something, just note that you'll have to upgrade the driveline and you'll have to also increase the amount of weight that the bed can hold. This will very, very easily kind of just bottom out. I mean, that's it. It does have bump stops, so it will continue to go, but it's, you know, that's all you're going to have. It's very, very light. It's a light duty K truck. I mean, that's exactly what it is. You will see this truck again very soon. We're going to do a full lighting kit installation on this very soon. So we'll have the signals and all that working. We'll detail it up, make some, make some slight changes to the cosmetics. I love the color, so it's going to stay blue, but I do want to add my Ampro door panels that I made for the van. And I also want to add some, ah, some people. We need to have people in here. My friends, thank you all so much for watching.